Corona doesn't exist, climate change is a hoax, and the elite abuses children in dark basements. How is it possible that people believe this nonsense? Of course, there's a bad role of the social media, but I think there's more to it. This dangerous imaging has also to do with the concept of confidence and the way we deal with complexity. The point is that people make images of reality that have no relationship with reality. To make that clear, I'll use the distinction I introduced in episode 3 of the series between complex and complicated. On the right hand side you see the complicated. You see all elements introduced by governments like policy, laws, regulations, standards, rules, protocols, procedures. They are all created by man. On the left hand side you see complex elements like values and confidence. They have emerged. And today I will focus on confidence. That's not something that you can create. Confidence has to be given to you or not. What you see very often is that when people have a good idea, for example, about their own environment, they have to meet people from government. And before they are aware, they are sucked into the system. And then they are confronted with a paper reality. You have to act according to protocols and procedures, and you have to meet standards. And when complex and complicated are not well balanced, as shown in this picture, you experience that government is not trusting you. And trust is something that goes in both directions. When government is not trusting you, you will not trust government. And in the evening, you will complain about it with your friends in the pub. And bit by bit, in this social process, you see it here on the left-hand side, the confidence is declining. This is what happens in a low-trust social network. A network of people that have only little faith in government. When government comes with information, well, it's absorbed a little bit. However, when there is other information coming from someone else, we call it the peripheral stimulus, and this information could be completely wrong, then this will happen. A small illustration from my own practice. It takes place about 20 years ago in a full packed community center. About 100 people are listening to the plans the municipality made for redevelopment of a street. To my opinion, a real improvement. More green, more safety. However, the atmosphere is tense. The people in the room have little confidence in the local government and they have all reasons to do so. One of the elements in the plan is that rainwater from roofs and roads is infiltrated into the subsoil. Then, in the back of the room, there's a man putting up his finger, and that is the peripheral stimulus. I have heard that when you infiltrate rainwater into the subsoil, our basements will be full of water. It's incorrect, but the audience reacts directly. It's a complete chaos. One reproach follows the other, and the evening ends in a deception. The next day, it says in the newspaper, municipality is flooding basements. It's all about making images out of the information offered to you. And these images are not always the same as reality. And that's not new. It was already described by Plato in the cave allegory. And he introduced the word simulacrum. It's a distortion of reality. A more recent source is Jean Baudrillard, a French philosopher. 
and he describes a simulacrum as something that has no relationship with reality at all. It's a copy without original. This is how a simulacrum might emerge. There are several images, complexity reductions about climate change. And one of them is there has always been climate change. And in fact, that's true. What we see is that many people are attracted by an image. Politicians, some companies, and they expect to get profit out of it. And they bring it to a next level. Then relevant knowledge is ignored. Information supporting the image is passed and information that undermines the image is blocked. The result is that in a climate of mistrust, the image can grow into a simulacrum. In this case, the climate change is a hoax. The point that I would like to make is that when we have images, we have to bring them down to earth and organize sense of reality. And to my opinion, that means that we have to accept complexity. In episode seven, I introduced three steps for coping with complexity. And I think these items are crucial for building up trust. To have a genuine interest in what's happening in reality. And that you're conscious of inclusion and exclusion. So when you build up an image, you're also excluding processes. And the last one, to organize dialogues between people who reduce complexity differently, who have different views of reality. My message in this episode is not that to avoid simulacra, we have to trust each other, have confidence in each other. I think it's important to be aware that there are several forces interacting with each other. There are forces that build up trust and there are forces that break down trust. And these forces have to interact, you have to connect them. And when you succeed in that, you will create something that we call healthy distrust or a critical attitude. And out of that comes practical wisdom. And one thing is sure, practical wisdom is more than filling in checklists in a correct way. Well, this was episode number 10. I hope you enjoyed it. The next episode, I will talk about politics and I hope to see you again. Till then. Hoi!